We have our 1,000 plus horsepower 2JZ mounted in our Supra. We still have a ton of work to do. The deadline for SEMA is coming up quick, so let's get to work. What's up everybody? We're back with another episode of our Mark IV Supra and it's getting a little spicy around here. We have our fully built 2JZ in the engine bay with our massive Garrett Turbo. Obviously there's a lot of work still to do so we're going to start working on some of the finishing touches. We need to get all of our pulleys, our AC compressor, alternator, power steering, all that on. I'm going to start working on the intake manifold, get our nitrous plumbed, hey. and start finalizing some things on the intake manifold so we can mount that up for the final time and start wiring our fuel and plumbing everything. And Did you say NAS? Nice. Nice, baby. It's hey, going to be good. It is getting spicy in here. It is. It's going to so, be very spicy. We're going to be working on a lot of stuff in the background while Quinn is doing that work. We're also going to be mounting a lot of the uh, Chase Bay's reservoirs and those types of things because we've got our friend from Dime PSI coming. He's going to do all of our plumbing for us to yep. help alleviate some of this time constraints that we have. It's his expertise, so we might as well leave it to him. So we're going to start getting some of that stuff mounted so he can come in and connect point A to point B and we can get some fluids in this thing. It'll be good. Let's get started. Let's get into it. For now, I'm gonna start working on our nitrous system just on the intake side. So we have direct port foggers that will be going in on the intake manifold. Luckily, Plasma Man actually has little step ups. So this manifold is set up to run with nitrous, which is really cool. So we're gonna tap the manifold, get these guys set up in place, and then we're gonna start running and making our hard lines into our distribution box, one for fuel, one for nitrous. And then hooking up our nitrous, when we actually go to do the rest of the system, is gonna be as easy as just popping a line onto the intake manifold and we're done. So we're gonna start drilling holes, get everything figured out, then we'll keep jamming from there. So I just finished drilling and tapping all of our holes in the intake manifold for our nitrous fogger. So this is a wet kit, so it has a port for nitrous and a port for fuel. So these are NPT and they actually provided the tap for them, which is really nice. So we're gonna get them set up like that. So what you wanna see on the inside is you wanna see both ports on the fogger open. So there's a little hole for nitrous and a little hole for fuel and you wanna be able to see both. So we've got that set up on all of them. We're gonna clean the threads on these because they probably have a little bit of cutting oil on them. And then we're going to put these guys in and start working on our lines. So now comes the challenging part, which is gonna be making line. So we need to make hard lines from each one. It's gonna come out and then it's gonna all go to a collector. So we have 12 lines we gotta make. We're gonna bend and twist and flare and do all that fun stuff and then we'll have nitrous. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the Throttle YouTube channel and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss a thing. So I finished our nitrous, now I'm starting on our fuel. So I've got our first two lines. So this is cylinder three and four. Got that set up. I wanted to get this kind of close to the nitrous. Kind of keep everything looking nice and tight. Let's keep going. So our fuel lines and our nitrous lines are done. Everything is still loose because our compression fittings are not tight yet. So everything can still like pop out and slide and move around. So our next step is gonna take everything back off, tighten everything down, and then uh, we'll be done. Final assembly. You can win our C6 Z06 Corvette. Head on over to throttle.com. Every dollar you spend on merchandise or car parts is gonna be an entry to win this car plus $20,000 cash. Don't hesitate, get those entries in today. I hope I'm handing you the keys. All 
All right, well, it's Plasma Man Day around here at the throttle shop. Quinn's over there working on nitrous stuff on our Plasma Man intake manifold. And I get to work on our Plasma Man intercooler, which this is their Pro Series intercooler. Look at the thickness on this thing. Woo! She's nice. This is a drop-in radiator from CSF. It's meant to replace the factory setup. Just want to plop this in here because I want to get an idea of how everything's going to sit before we uh, start making our intercooler stuff. Man, it's a nice, pretty snug fit. We're tossing the front bumper on with proper hardware and the braces in place, the brackets, because we want to make sure this is exactly where it's going to be when we're done. That way, when we mount the intercooler, it's in the right location. All right, so what I just put in were these these bolts here that run across the core support. And essentially what those are for is the factory under tray. But what's cool is this bumper, after the guys over at uh, Biggie's fortified it with our Rhino liner, it's actually really stable. So I can actually just take our intercooler, sit it in here where I want it, just start making base plates, which is pretty cool. Normally you'd have to put a tranny jack or something underneath it to hold it in place and have run the risk of it falling. And this, is, uh, this is quite nice. Our Plasma Man quick couplers here. They sent these as part of our intercooler kit. These are really nice. In fact, this is the tightest tolerance out of any of these I've ever used. Now we use these on Mad Mike's quad rotor drift car back in the day. And the nice thing is, is I never had to mess with them. Cause once they went on, they were good to go. We never had to really play with them too much. But man, this thing seals really tightly. But anyway, the reason I'm getting these out is cause I'm gonna throw them on here just because we've got a little bit of potential for interference here. I just wanna make sure that we've got these on. That way I leave myself enough room. I push the intercooler back far enough that we don't have rubbing on the bumper so that it doesn't tear up the paint. We're going to use this face as our mounting surface. I just whipped up some quick angle iron and I have it cut over here. Essentially this is going to go on the face of this like that. And that's gonna allow us to pick this up just like that. It's getting close. She's still looking pretty ugly. Got a lot of dressing up to do, but we'll get there. She's holding on her own weight. I mean, it's pretty normal for her when you mount it like this. All the other kits that we've ever done that come like this, they all do the same thing. They kind of have a little bit of a shimmy to them. So what you want to do is shore up the bottom. Now, the nice thing about the Plasma Man intercooler is it has provisions on the bottom as well for two M8 mounting bolts. So we'll probably just do some straights off the bottom to this core support just to give it a little bit of support. And then we'll also rely on the uh, intercooler piping as well to provide a little bit of stability. All in all, I think it's really good. probably can't see what we finished already, but Ricky went ahead and threw some black paint and some matte clear on the bracket. Whoa, I can't. Can you even see that, dog? I got it. All right, you got long arms. Short torso, long arms. <laughs> These boff boys. One thing, and that's it. Well, you got freaking half inch plate steel up top. Yeah, but you should have seen it swaying like a Tarzan Palm up here. Up there, yeah. Dang. Aluminum too, I like it. Yeah, yeah that's perfect, dude. I think so. I was gonna make two, but I don't think it needs it, honestly. A 
This is the Chase Bay's catch can. We worked with Chase Bay's on this build because they make a lot of really cool stuff for all these projects. They do stuff for R32s, they do stuff for Supras. The main platforms, BMWs, you name it. But this is a really cool setup. So the catch can is down here out of the way. One of the things I like about Chase Bay's is that they actually think about this type of stuff. Like a lot of people just plop a catch can wherever they can find a hole for it. and. These guys actually put some thought into it. It's pretty cool. So it's down here out of the way. He's got clearance for the power steering setup. It's pretty cool. The boys over at Gertie sent us their oil filter relocation kit, which is gonna pair nicely with our Chase Bay's uh, thermostatic sandwich adapter, which Quinn previously tossed on the block here. This is our AC compressor. We shot it, cleaned it up, looks good. We're gonna put it on and add more stuff to this corner down here. So this is the other half of our Grex Gretti oil filter relocation kit. So this is the part that actually holds the oil filter. We have a brand new Gretti filter on there. We have the other side made it on the block and we're gonna mount this kind of where it was, which was like right around here. So the original Super setup had a relocation kit on it already, which is pretty cool, but the relocation itself wasn't really well done. It had just kind of some super weird brackets. So what I'm actually gonna do is mount it right about here. So this is a transmission dust cover. So if I take this off, you can actually see our clutch master's clutch through here. So I'm thinking of just welding a bracket on the end of that and using that as the mount for the Gretti relocation kit. It seems to be in a really good spot. We have really good trajectory from uh, where our AN fittings are pointing, so it'll be very easy to make lines for it. Once we're done, we're gonna clean this thing up and paint it so it doesn't look like a crusty pile anymore. So, let me get started on that. Mounting bracket is drying, so I'm gonna go ahead and final assembly on this. We're gonna tighten down all of our ports, get some uh, thread sealer on there, get everything nice and tight, and then we'll install this into the car. Relocation kit is set up, so when Dime comes down, you can just make all of our lines, which is really cool. So I'm gonna move into some of the new stuff we got here. I was gonna clean up and paint and make the alternator all nice, but then I started taking a closer look at it, and there's some damage on the housings and just kind of a crusty. So we went over to our boys at Advance, and they sent us a brand new alternator. Really nice, so we're gonna put our Gretti underdrive pulley on this, and then we're gonna put our Servantine belt on, and hope it fits, because this is a factory belt we have here. I don't know if it's set up to run with the Gretti pulleys. We're gonna find out. Before any of this goes on, we're gonna be installing this. This is our lower radiator hose uh, thermostat housing adapter, which is really cool. This is made by Rad. So it actually takes it and points it straight down. So it's gonna clear our turbo. Very nice piece. It's also already set up for a big Dash 20, which is gonna be really cool. And we're gonna be running a Mishimoto race thermostat with that. So I'm gonna get this all set up because it goes behind the alternator. And then we're gonna put our alternator on, get our belts on, and we'll be done. Chase Bay's kit came with a really nice bracket. We're using a factory location to mount the power steering reservoir. Quinn's working on some of the lines and fittings. It's a really nice close run to our power steering rack right there. We've already got our high pressure line in place. So Chase Bay's has a lot of really cool stuff and this is one of them. So this is uh, the feed fitting for the power steering. So it replaces this guy. So instead of a bar, we have an AN and this actually rotates inside of here so we can pretty much orient it however we want. So we kind of get to choose how our lines are gonna look and where everything's gonna be as far trajectory goes. We're gonna set this up. My goal right now is to set up pretty much all of the fittings and get everything in location that it needs to be in. So when Dime comes over here, this needs to go there and he just comes in and he just nails it. 
I'm gonna drop our intake manifold on, kind of mock, put it in place and get our fuel rail in place. So we can start tackling things like our fuel pressure regulator. We have a fuel damper kit that's gonna be going on and a few other fuel things need to be in place. So I'm gonna drop the intake manifold on. We're gonna put it on with two bolts, get our fuel rail on, then start figuring out where all of those things are gonna go. I threw our Dishworks injectors in. First of all, we're gonna be running 2200s, which are a massive fuel injector. I think that's probably the biggest set of injectors we've had around the shop in a while. And I throw a Plasma Man fuel rail on top of it. And despite them being a massive 2200 cc, the injector itself is actually really small. So there's a pretty considerable gap between the rail and the injector, which sucks. So I'm gonna have to probably machine or cut these uh, little standoffs down and suck that over. So I need to cut about 0.9 inches off of this. So this line here is actually at 0.45, and I've made another line at 0.45. So we're gonna lop that off the top, lop that off the bottom, and that should give us an even 0.9 that we need. So let's run this through the saw. If you guys didn't know, our Mark IV Supra is actually headed to SEMA thanks to Sunoco. We are gonna be hosting a meet and greet on Thursday at 11 a.m. if you guys are at SEMA. Come check out the car, come meet the team. We'll see you guys there. So I've got our Plasma Man fuel rail fitted, which is really nice. Fitted onto our 2200cc Dishworks injectors. So we're waiting for all of our lines to come in, not our lines, but our uh, plumbing kits for this. And we're gonna have our fuel pressure gauge sitting right on the top right there. It'll be really nice clean. Now I need to figure out where I gotta put this. This is the biggest fuel pressure regulator I think I've seen in this shop so far. Absolutely massive. And that's because it's running at dash 10. This whole fuel system is gonna be dash 10. So I'm gonna figure out a good spot to mount this and we'll get this thing mounted and then uh, from there it's just gonna be simple as running lines. So I'm gonna be making the mount for our fuel pressure regulator. So we have some aluminum bar stock here. So this is gonna give it just enough thickness to sneak that pressure regulator away from the wall. It's also gonna give me a good mounting point to mount everything from. So we're gonna cut this to length. We're gonna get it so the pressure regulator is offset a little bit. We're actually gonna rivnut the end of it. So we're gonna be rivnutting this to the face. So we're gonna rivnut the bar here. And then for the mounting side on the firewall, we're gonna be blowing holes through this and then the bolt will go through and mount to the back. Got it, first try. So I did that just to make sure that it's right. So now we're gonna oversize these. So this is actually gonna sit inside like that. And we're gonna use much smaller hardwares, but I just wanna do that to make sure that it fits so I don't get it wrong and then keep working on the piece that's wrong. So we introduced some CSF coolers previously in the videos and we decided that those weren't gonna actually cut the mustard. We were gonna put them down here on either side of the intercooler. Unfortunately, there was just no way to make it look nice. So we reached out to CSF. We actually returned the two coolers that they had originally sent us for this. This is called the Boss and this is a FC RX-7, a replacement cooler actually but it fits the bill perfectly. It has it's 22 inches in length. Already has dash 10s welded on at a nice 45 degree angle here for us. And it's gonna slide in right behind our inner cooler in front of our radiator. So we're gonna slide it down in here. We're gonna make two brackets. One's gonna pick up on the frame rail here. And the other one, we're gonna pick up on the center bar here. And it's also gonna capture our Chase Bay's radiator overflow, which is hiding down here. It's a really cool location for this because we have a beauty panel that's gonna go over it. And it's basically gonna make it disappear. But if we need to get to the radiator overflow, we can just remove that beauty panel with a couple screws and here we have our radiator overflow, which is perfect. So 
don't think I explained. This is actually a Chase Bay's mount for one of their reservoirs. This is one of the ones that we weren't using, but it actually is coming in handy because we can repurpose it to mount our oil cooler, which is pretty sick. So it mounts on the frame rail like that, picks up our oil cooler here. Shout out to Chase Bay's. They got some really cool stuff. Their little mounting tool or little mounting brackets are really nice too. All right, the cooler is mounted and I just have some cardboard wedged between the uh, inner cooler and the old cooler. And I also have a block of wood underneath it on our inner cooler, basically the lower mount, just to kind of keep it shimmed up and keep it straight. These come out of the cooler, like I said, at a 45 degree angle. So we've got some 45 degree fittings we're just using as test fittings to make sure that we've got this thing in the right location. So as you can see, we're trying to sneak this thing as close to the frame rails as possible because we do have our inner cooler piping that's going to come out of here. So we're just cognizant of the amount of space that we have to work with. With, and we're kind of in jamming everybody's going to be kind of fighting for this same location so what's nice is that chase bay's bracket has a nice slot in it so i'm actually able to loosen that downstar hardware and slide this cooler inboard and outboard so when i make the inside bracket i'll also slot that as well that way we have adjustment on this cooler down the road if anything should change we can literally just loosen those m8s and slide the cooler in and out up to about it looks like an inch inch and a half Bracket's done. Quinn burn a little TIG weld on it for us. And I shot some paint. It's all dried up now. Gonna toss her in, see how it goes. Hopefully it goes the way it did when it came off. So this is our power steering reservoir. One of the nice things about Chase Bays is they actually sent us out a ton of little brackets for mounting some of the reservoirs. Now our initial idea was to put it pretty much where the factory one goes, up on the front of the shock tower. Unfortunately, due to our plasma man manifold and the throttle body setup and the fuse box being right there, it doesn't fit anymore. We're gonna have to make a new place for it. And I think Mickey and I have thought of a solution using this bracket that's gonna work fine. So the original bracket would have had it hanging off kind of like this. Um, the stock Jay-Z manifold rolls up and then comes forward pretty much over here. So it's really compact and doesn't really come this far out in the engine bay. But our plasma man manifold does. We're gonna sneak this kind of back here. We're gonna have to bend this bracket up a little bit, sneak it slowly but surely, get it mounted up back here. So this will keep kind of everything, all the fluid reservoirs that you're really gonna see back in this corner, which I think is really cool and it's gonna make it nice and clean. So I'm gonna get to modifying this and then uh, we'll mount it. I'm gonna come back to our intake manifold. So we have all of our stuff from Haltac just arrived this morning, which is super exciting. We got a lot of really cool things gonna be going on. So we're gonna start with the air temp sensor and this is our map sensor. So this is actually not gonna get mounted on the intake manifold. This is gonna be set up somewhere on the firewall and we're gonna run a vacuum to it. However, because we deleted the brake booster on this, we don't have to plumb the brake booster vacuum on anymore, which is really cool. So it's gonna allow me to individually run vacuum from each thing that needs vacuum. It's gonna get pretty much its own source of vacuum. So we're not gonna be teeing off vacuum lines which is really cool. We're gonna have one for our blow-off valve, one for our fuel pressure regulator, one for our map sensor, and then we're gonna have our air intake temp sensor right in the manifold. So really cool, very simple setup. here with Brendan from Dime PSI and he's brought down a bunch of tools. We're actually gonna throw them on the Supra and have him tackle some of our fluid lines. So show me what you got and kind of what you brought to play with here. So we use the toolkit as an analog to measure the all different combinations of fittings we can use. So we have basically exact analogs to the fittings that connect to this dummy hose. You can try out different sizes, lengths, angles until you get the perfect Sick. fit. And it just fits onto the car like that. Add in adapter here. If you have to get clocking so you can make it so and measure the exact angle, and then we crimp together Sweet. a finished one in PTFE. So you're pretty much making the lines mock, and then you just go back. And yeah, but you, but you can get it perfect. So if it's a 45 or a 60 makes a difference to how it looks or how it performs, then you can get it right the first time. And Sick. We put it together, so it comes to you fully finished and clean and pressure tested. So pretty much taking all the guesswork out. Yeah. Right? Nice. Okay. Speeding it up a lot. 
Cool, so we're gonna have him tackle our oil lines for our relocation kit as well as our oil cooler kit and some of the power steering lines and even handle the catch can. So we got a lot of work to do, let's get into it. Brennan and Quinn have done a fantastic job getting our lines set up and I'm looking forward to getting these back from you. But before we dismiss you here, let's go over what exactly you have, what you've invented and how it works and what makes it great. Sure, so really it's just a, a way to mock up and design your hoses and like fine tune it so you can figure out how everything routes around your engine bay, how you can collide with other things, get in the way. So we had a few issues today with the way the car was set up. We yep. just used the kit, made it longer or shorter, changed the type of fitting we used and we were able to like keep everything tightly packaged and have no fouling or anything else. Thank you for coming down today. If you guys are interested in this, you have a shop and you're doing a lot of these type of lines, I highly recommend checking out his website. We'll leave that link in the description down below. And he's also gonna be offering a discount code which we'll also leave in the description down below for any of you viewers at home that would like to get these kits in your shop because they are advantageous and really cut down on time and effort. So thank you for coming by today. We'll look forward to getting the lines and we'll show you guys in the next video what it looks like all buttoned up. I wanted to put the rear bumper on. It hasn't been on the car since the car has been painted. So I wanted to just make sure everything fits, lines up, and I bolt it down. So also, we picked up our graphics from Modern Image today, so I want to start getting some sizing for the sponsor logos that are going to go on. In order to do that, we have to have the body put together. So this is going to be the most complete you'll have seen this car since we fitted the kit initially before it went to Biggie's Custom. All right, well, that's gonna be a wrap on today's episode. It looks like we took a bunch of steps backwards because there's a lot less stuff in the engine bay. I don't think there is. We got a lot of things <laughs> fitted. All of our pulleys are on. We got all of our chase bays stuff on. All of our Gretti uh, pulley kit is on. We got all of our fluid lines figured out with uh, the help of Dime over here. We got our intake manifold started. Our nitrous kit is installed. We got a lot of sensors in there as well, so we're making really good progress on this car. And we got some body panels on. Yeah, we, we do have bumper on. The side skirts are on for fitment and do I want to tease that but you got the livery in? I picked up the livery today. <laughs> it's pretty exciting. It kind of like seals the deal yeah. on how amazing this car is going to be. And we got it directly from Modern Image themselves, who is just up the street from us. So they're the creators of the livery and uh, they still make it to this day, which is pretty cool. Yep. So you guys will see that in a future episode. We still have a lot of work to do to get this thing fired up. We got to finish a lot of systems. We got to put a lot of things on and then we'll run. So thank you guys so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next one. These are all, uh... Yeah! What? What the... <laughs> oh, did you get it? Uh, right there. You got him? Yeah. Got that on camera. Oh, mess with me, Nat. <laughs> so Quinn was here. thinking of mounting the overflow Chase Bay's overflow tank in a few different spots. You want to show them where you had in mind? Yeah. So the original spot was right here, yeah. but it's, it's too tall. Yeah. So unfortunately it's not gonna go yes. there. Ricky's yeah. idea was here. I kinda like Ricky's idea. That'd be a good spot. I don't I think we might be able to get away without it like interfering with the belt. I'm not really a fan of that. I I was like looking over here maybe, but that's this is in the way, so then I was like, why don't we just like over there? And then Nate was about that. I was thinking like somewhere over here. Can you just lay it in here? We could do that, you know, but then you don't utilize the bracket. But then so we, we just kinda tie utilize it to the, the bracket. breathers. So we could, if this wasn't V-banded, like we could do that, you know? These decisions, man. We could go like that. Oh, we could even hang it from the hood. You know, it's, like it's at you SEMA extra and long lines you're never going to have the hood closed. Up. Yeah, you know? Wow. Can't hang it off that though.
So the boys over at Grit. He dropped your water bottle. Um, hold on. Oh. 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 Did you did you tell Spillner to come in today? Who? Oh. Oh, Spillner's here. 